Hi everyone, welcome to Acres of Clay Homestead. My name is Rhonda and I wanted to do a quick little update. I know there's a lot of you waiting for uh, the next video about the Challenger, getting it put back together and then getting it running again. But that video is on hold. I was hoping to have it out last week and then I was hoping to have it out this week, but um, we're still waiting for the dealership to come out and calibrate it so that we can start it. It needs to be calibrated. Everything needs to have oil run through it and they have the tools and the equipment to do that and we don't, so we have to wait for them. We also understand that the dealership is extremely busy right now, so we're kind of on the waiting list um, and they'll get to us when they can. They said two weeks ago that they were gonna get to us, probably like on a Wednesday. Well, that didn't happen and then um, they, then Kevin talked to them last week and said maybe um, Monday or Tuesday, but that didn't happen. And so hopefully, you guys are probably seeing this on Sunday, hopefully they will come out this week and we can get this wrapped up because, um, you know, it's starting to get warmer. Um, we haven't planted any corn yet, but time is getting close. So we haven't needed it yet for tillage. Um, that's our main thing for tillage and hauling manure but we are using another tractor for hauling manure. So we're waiting patiently, but once the dealership comes out, then I will definitely get that video out to you guys. But while you guys are waiting for that tractor video to come out, I have this video. Today's video is going to be about another tractor repair that we did for a customer. Um, his tractor needed some work done. So let's jump right into it because I think it's gonna be a lengthy video. Thanks everyone for watching, and before we get this tractor going, can you guys just hit that thumbs up button? That helps my channel. That's like the biggest support that you guys can give to us as a channel, and I truly do appreciate that. Uh, also leave your comments and questions down in the comment section below. All right, let's get going on this video. That seems sloppy. Welcome to the city. shop. Something is terribly wrong. This is the old air filter. I wonder how clean it is. Okay, so this one's a little interesting. I gotta get that up. So and... much room to work. <laughs> so you said last It time. is actually a lot of room to work. Out of range. <laughs> It's about 35. That ain't great either. So how many revolutions do you normally do to, you know, get a good reading? I, I've i always gone about five, but you just have to make sure you're doing the same thing. There's a point where it kind of just levels out. It's more of just making sure you're doing about the same. On each yeah. cylinder? Yeah. It's the actual spec on this engine for compression. Oh, why? Well, uh, zero, 45, a 35. Well, you know the first piston's out of. I know. Something's wrong with that one. So we keep track of what each one does. Sydney's fascinated by the steering on this. <laughs> Every time I come out here, come over here. Mom. Okay, so we got number four hooked up. Alright, number four. Here we go again. And that one's 40. 40 ish? Yeah. Well, number one definitely got something there. Yeah. The other three might be fine. Let's have a look at the specs. So, what do you, what do you have right here? Um, Ultimate leak down tester. It doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Um, online special that uh, what is not that great, but um, I've been using it to regulate airflow into a piston. And then I will roll the engine over till both the intake and exhaust valve close. And then here where the air leaks out, or try anyways. Um, so this doesn't, this just, doesn't it, meet your Qualifications. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work properly, no. but he makes it yeah. do. It's more of just a way to shove air into the cylinder to hear 
where it's coming out that's not supposed to be because it has no compression, so air's going somewhere. Well, it's either leaking out of intake valve, intake, uh, exhaust, or a crack. The ring. Well, there or a crack in the head or block. Yeah. yeah. But it'll give us a little bit more of a definitive thing so that we know where to look when we pull apart. So that's the next step. Yes. So I put a little bit of air in it. The pressure. This is my pressure gauge. It sounds like all the valves are closed, but something's hissing. There it is. You hear it? Yeah, so the air is coming out my uh, filler cap, which means that, yeah. So either the gasket is per or Ring. broken, we no, not necessarily. It could still be the head gasket. If it's just the gasket broken between. Can't be. Depends how bad the gasket is. If your exhaust, if your exhaust is bad, it'd be coming out of the butt. If, if your exhaust valves, yep. Yeah. Intake valves would come, be coming out of your right here. air felt. You'd be hearing it. Yeah, if you're shoving back through your right, air coming out of crankcase, that's rings. Or, yeah, something. Not necessarily. It could be a crack there somewhere. Yeah, but it's more likely a ring. But that doesn't explain the coolant in the radiator. <laughs> no, here we go with the coolant in the radiator again. Yeah. Coolant in the oil. It might be a combination of stuff. <clears throat> but until you pull it now. Yeah. Well, I should remove it. Wait, if you're blowing down into the. But you'd have bubbles out of there if that was going into the. I, I, you know, it's head gasket first and then rings, but otherwise we'll have to look at the head pretty close. It could be a crack in the head that went through both the water galley and just, I'm trying to think, is it only the water galley through the head? There isn't, no, just no air chamber in it, is it? As I said, you know, if you're blowing air out here, bottom end, that's ring. So if you tried it on another cylinder, would it do the same thing? It shouldn't, it shouldn't. Because of the air compression, yeah. This cylinder doesn't have compression, so the air is going somewhere. Apparently, the air is going into the crankcase. So, that's the whole all question me. is just trying to figure out exactly why. I'm trying to think of how we narrow that down without digging into it. It could still be the head gasket. If the gasket permeated or I know, broke yeah. between oil galley and the cylinder but, and the water jacket. But, but, until we get into it. But, when you're running, uh, you have pressure in this your- This is where we can discuss for hours. <laughs> we can keep saying but. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> if we have, com but the other thing is when it's running, <laughs> if you have compression into your, you know, your radiator's compressed. Yeah. And then to push oil into the compression, into something- I, I understand that. Yeah. But if the air is going somewhere, it's not necessarily having to push Still gotta push that if oil. I understand that that's broken. That seal between all three is broken. You wouldn't. The air could be going out the bottom and still be getting compressed into the. No, the compression would be going out the bottom and still be blending or mixing the two. That also leaves the question of how is the bottom end. So here is the Ford 9N that we are farting around with. The guy who had it was getting fuel, or actually he thought it was um, water in the oil, but it's actually fuel in the oil. This cylinder here has no compression, and it looks like on the sleeve that on the ring is cracked, which is probably why it's getting fuel in the oil. And then the rest of the cylinders are only running about 35 PSI, which is about a third, at least a third of what it's supposed to be running. So we're tearing it apart, gonna do a full rebuild on it, on the engine. We got all the front end taken off. That took about an hour, not much to it, but so we're gonna get the, gonna remove the engine from here, put it on the engine block and tear it apart so we can get it rebuilt. Now you can't tell me that this 
Uh, connector doesn't look like a 9mm cartridge. <laughs> So here it is, came out pretty easy, we'll put it on the stand there and start tearing it down. So. Low, neutral, and high. Is it? Maybe. I wonder how he managed to do that. High. What's wrong? Oh, they're just looking at. So they've got some sort of range select lever here that he broke. The, the owner, owner broke? Did. Yeah. I don't know specifically how he broke it, but we were just looking at because we had to pull the engine out, why it's broke. And it looks like, for some reason, either the roll pin or whatever was through it, either broke or I don't know where it went. And what are you doing? Looking. Oh. Here's the ring. That's not good. Uh, apparently either it's been running with fuel in the oil long enough that's been diluted or there's been dirt in it or something but the uh, the bearings are all scored up this is where's the bearing this that's has some pitting this is like uh, yeah that's been you should be able to run your fingernail over without catching it and that's all yeah, yeah this is all like really rough well I mean, really rough by a quick maybe. See what he wants with it. Just get it tore apart. So it's not worth fixing? Well, he's gonna have a... It's our full rebuild at this point. Oh, so it's gonna be probably more than he's willing to put into it. Well, I don't know what a crank is. It's probably gonna be more than the tractor. Look, you, all three of you are wearing red. So I'll just, oh, like I said, get them all me. apart. Oh, I am too. <laughs> um, okay, so that, that explains why there's no compression. That explains the fuel in the oil. Yeah. But the only thing is, uh, is getting it into the antifreeze. That's fuel. Still don't add up. So when you first took it apart, you thought it was going to be an easy fix. Then what? Well, we never know. When From the symptoms, I thought it could be down to this. That's my thinking. It's all kind of gambling till we dig into it. And that's what I got to talk to him about. So then we ended up taking this apart and just noticing. The rings are worn. The liners are worn really bad. The. Uh, you're gonna need more of a punch. Than you're gonna need a pin punch. Um, pin punch. Hence the low compression. This cylinder had no compression because the rings were worn through fully in one spot. Oh. And hence, actually, there was a section of the cylinder wall that was not getting cleaned. It had carbon on it. What you working on? I don't know. I don't feel like talking. You don't feel like talking? <laughs> Well, they have it kind of all apart and cleaned up. Not working on cleaning primarily. Yeah, I just pulled the valve covers off, kind of just polishing everything, making sure, just giving it a good once over. What's the plan with it? I've got to go through, clean it all up, do a bunch of spec checking on it, make sure everything's within spec, um, put new sleeves in it, and What's the owner want done with it? Because it's going to cost know. probably quite a bit to have the whole. Yeah, it's going to be a kind of an economy rebuild. Um, it's ultimately, it's going to get new sleeves, new 
pistons, new rings. Um, that's probably just of uh, the majority of it done. As long as everything's within spec and uh, we don't find any cracks or anything. So just kind of going over, gonna make sure all the valves are in spec, seating properly, all that looks good. No cracks anywhere. So you getting close to putting it back together? Yeah, I'm just removing the surface rust. I'm not scratching it, just removing some of the surface rust, rubbing alongside the cylinder walls. And then we are going to, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna hone them, but I'm going to uh, polish them. And then I will put the sleeves in, and then we will throw the crank in. Do you have all the parts? In. Almost. Oh. Um, we ordered a new valve kit for it, because. There were a couple broken springs and some of the valves had some pitting. It's not perfect, but it will um, it'll work. So Good. slowly get it back together. So it's not every day that you see a crankshaft on the kitchen table. But here at Acres of Clay, you never know what's going to be on the kitchen table. So we get yelled at by mother. Now, now. As long as it doesn't stay here till supper time. Oh. Or leak. Or, or leak. Something. <laughs> that would be bad. You're just trying to make sure that the specs are all. Yeah, so we're kind of. I'm calibrating this guy, and then I've got to uh, check journals all feel good and look pretty good. So, just got to spec these out. I think. So, this is a regrind, and they stamp the number on um, this section of the crank. I'd have to flip it to show you. Yeah. But it's a hundred under. Uh, so I have to um, just spec it out, make sure it is actually that, and get the what right bearings. What ordered. it says it is. Yeah. So. There you go. And then we'll throw it in, plastic gauge it, make sure things in spec, and roll. Yeah. Tractor parts came, and now we're doing an unboxing. Right in the house. You got a new <laughs> piston? Yeah. Oh, I thought you got the uh, power just re ringing. No, it's new pistons, it's new uh, sleeves, and new rings. Oh, wow. Then that's got to go what, away from the crank? I don't know what you can think about. <laughs> Definitely no slop in that. And that's a head gasket. Head All your gasket, new uh, oil cranks. pan, yep. cranks, yes. Hey, look at that. Alright, now we gotta roll it over, right? If you want, or you could shove on it. Can you tap on it? Sure, you got this the right way? Pinpoints that way? Uh, yep, I think so. Yeah, there you go. There you go. One well, of these gotta be torqued too. 45. We're gonna put number two in, put new sleeves in. Um, cleaned everything out, oiled the cylinder wall, lubed the uh, cranking rod, uh, what do you call that, journal. Nathan's got the ring compressor on, piston. There we are. So we'll flip it over. Well, I guess we just flip it over. So. Fish tapping that in.
lots of things we could do. Mother could do. She's what? All right. There she be. This is just manila paper. Well, you're gonna have to when you do the oil pan one, you're gonna have to you cut this back, right? Mm -hmm. well, Seals for the crankshaft and the So you put new seals in on this side and on that side. And this is the oil pan. Yep. And he's getting ready to kind of assemble it and put it all back together. Alright, get these tightened up and then we'll look at those right there. Okay, <laughs> they're gonna give it a start. I'll try. Self-destruct. Push. 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 